Hi everyone, Sean here from SP Designs, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to build my cowl variance patterns for the bat, the cat, and the devil. So let's jump right in. Here you can see I've got my patterns printed out, and I've already gone ahead and traced them out into my materials, and I've cut out all of the pieces and made the markings from the patterns. You can see all of those marked out here, and the dots where all of the ear pieces are gonna connect together. So I've got my headliner, uh, it's backed with some black faux leather, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to attach the inner ear pieces to the top of the head. So you'll see the dots, the markings where the pieces match up, and those are gonna match to the dots in the center of the, of the ear piece. First thing I'm gonna do is just do a snip up to the dot in each of these corners so that when I'm sewing it together, it can um, it can spread out. Now, the ear piece attaches to the front of the head. The long side is the front. This is the back piece here. And the way it attaches is the, the fabric side of it is gonna go towards the inside, towards the top of the head. So what we're gonna do is we're going to match these pieces up at the dots and sew them down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match my dot in the center. I'm going to start from the front here at my seam allowance line. So a half inch in. And I'm going to sew that up to that pivot dot. I'm going to put the needle down. I'm going to pivot that out to match up to the edge of the earpiece. And then I'm gonna sew it to the back. And you can see there how that stitched from the front to the pivot and then all the way to the end. And then on the other side, it's just stitched straight across the bottom edge of that earpiece. And when you turn it open, this is what it looks like. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and trim out the foam on the back of this. So when we do the top stitching, it's gonna turn towards the top of the head. So what we wanna do is just really gently pull that foam out from that side. There, now we're gonna put the other ear on exactly the same way. and I'm gonna trim that foam out. There, now we've got both of our inner ear pieces attached to the head. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start sewing it down to the side piece. So you can see all the marks on the back here. And again, I'm just gonna do a clip in this corner to the dot where the ear moves from the forehead up into the point so that when I sew it down, that can, that can spread open. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the eyebrow right over the eye, making sure that I'm matching up my marks. And I'm going to stitch it from that edge right over the eye, matching up all of my markings and matching that clip that I made to where the ear attaches to the top of the head. So I want those points to match up and I'm gonna ease that curve to stitch up over the temple. Matching up that dot, and I'm gonna stop right on that pivot. So now you can see that I've got the, uh, the temple sewn together from the eye up to where the ear pivots up to the point. Now, I'm going to match up my ear points and I'm gonna stitch down starting from that pivot point up to the tip of the ear. I'm gonna sew up to the tip of the ear. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna walk it one step. Walk it one stitch, it helps get a better point 
when you turn it out. And then I'm going to keep my marks aligned. That mark matches up where the ear attaches to the back of the head. And I'm just going to sew all the way down, making sure that I've got all of my marks lined up. all the way to the bottom edge. And there's the one side attached. So now what I want to do is <clears throat> I want to go ahead and attach the other side. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm starting from the pivot at the ear on this one because I'm on the other side but it's exactly the same technique. And by the way, there's a devil version of this pattern too. And even though the ears, or well rather, I guess the horns for the devil version um, are more forward on the forehead, the process to build it is exactly the same. So now we've got our head completely assembled, and the only thing left is to sew up the back, but we'll do that in a couple of minutes. Uh, the first thing that we want to do now is start taking the foam, the rest of the foam out of the uh, top side of the head, because we're going to do our top stitching. So I want to just kind of carefully peel that back. Um, again, you know, where that foam was um, spray mounted onto the faux leather. And then just very carefully, without cutting through the stitching, go back and trim out all of that excess foam. And at this point, we also want to take the foam out of the ears. We want to trim away all of this excess foam uh, on both sides of the ears because when we go to turn the ears out, we want to make sure that we are able to get a nice point, and we won't be able to do that if there's too much bulk inside. And I'm also being careful not to cut through the stitching. Gonna go ahead and trim this material away from the ear point. Just want to do that to make sure that when we turn it, we have that nice point there without all that bulky excess fabric in there. Now I've changed over to my leather foot so that I can top stitch this. And what I'm gonna do is folding that seam allowance over towards the top of the head where we've um, trimmed out the excess foam. I'm just going to put that underneath there. And I'm going to give it a nice little top edge stitch just to hold everything in place and make sure that all the curves are nice. I'm just making sure that my seam allowance is laying down the right way. And then again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch around where the inner ear attaches to the top of the head. So it's hard to see here, but you just have to um, kind of ease the seam allowance, make sure the seam allowance is all going in the right direction, and then just pivot at those corners to go around where that inner ear attaches. And then when you get around to the front, you'll hit that pivot point where all the pieces attach, and then you'll just pivot around and go down the temple above the eye. I know it's hard to see. This can be a little bit of a fiddly part, but just go slow, take your time, make sure your seam allowance is in the right place you should be fine.
So now you can see if we push that ear through, you can see how that top stitching, you can see how that top stitching goes across, pivots there, goes across the top of the head where the inner ear attaches, comes back around, and then goes down the front of the temple all the way down to just above the eye. And when both sides are done, this is what we have so far. Now, before we attach the nose, all we want to do is go in and bind off these eye holes to finish them. So to do that, I've got some thin, black, stretchy faux leather um, cut in a two inch strip. And this is what I'm going to be using to bind off the eyes. So what I want to do is turn it inside out. I'm gonna start from right above the nose. I'm gonna go around the top of the eye and I'm gonna go all the way around until it comes out at the other end of the nose. I'm gonna get positioned under the machine. I'm gonna get my strip of binding. I'm gonna line the edges up. And then using my foot as a guide, I'm going to stitch that at a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around the outside of the eye. And at this point, this is where it's really good to use like a stretchy material to do bindings because um, it can go around the curves really well. Um, and it's easier to ease and um, it, it will flatten out better than trying to use like a twill tape or something that doesn't have any stretch. Like a, a thin black spandex would work really well here, um, but I have this four-way stretch like faux leather that I like to use with these types of cowls. Now I'm just going to trim this off there at the top of the nose. And you can see that I've got my binding sewn down around my eye. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very carefully roll that to the back. And then I'm going to go back around my eye. And I'm going to stitch right up against my seam line. To finish off that eye hole. And this can be a little bit of a fiddly bit too, but just again, take your time, you know, mold that, that stretchy fabric around the eye, make sure that you've got it pulled, you know, nice and taut so that you have an even binding, but not so tight that it's pulling everything out of shape. and just work your way all the way around. There. Now, I've got my eye hole completely bound, sewn down all the way around. Now what I need to do is just go in and trim out this excess in the back. Once again, I'm going to take my little scissors and being careful not to cut through the stitching, because then you'll have to go back and restitch it. Just very carefully trim that all the way down to get rid of all that excess. And 
there you can see the one finished eye. And now you're just going to go and do the exact same thing to the other one. Now that our eyes are done, we can sew the nose together. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew that eyebrow and the top of the nose together. And we're going to match up those two edges. And what we want to do is just try to make sure that we keep the, the edges, the finished edges, as even as possible. And we're using our half inch seam allowance here again. So just go from one side, matching up those finished edges. You may need to ease it a little bit, but that's okay. And then just stitch it straight across. There you go. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch that up towards the eyebrow. and just give that a nice little edge stitch to hold that seam allowance down. And then we'll trim off the excess on the inside. And there's our eyes and our nose completely assembled. Now what we're going to do is sew up the back. So I've got a dot here at the center front that shows me where my stitching is going to end. And what I want to do is just make sure the fabric's not wrinkled up inside there, that it's nice and nice and flat. I'm going to get a good point when I stitch that down. I'm going to go from that point. And I'm just going to match up all of my notches all the way across the back of the head, being careful not to catch the ears in this back seam. And I'm just gonna stick it all the way down to that bottom edge. And at this point, you could trim out all of that foam and top stitch it. Um, you could double stitch it um, and just trim it down. Um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and trim off the excess. Um, double stitching makes it um, more sturdy. If it's kind of tight getting on and off, you won't pop that back seam. Um, top stitching would obviously be the, the sturdiest, but I'm just going to, for the demonstration, go ahead and trim it away down to about a quarter to an eighth of an inch in there. And that's going to give us a nice curve. And now if we turn it out. We can see that our nice cat cowl is coming right along. Now what we just need to do is bind off the bottom. So we're going to start at the center back and we're going to do the same thing all the way around to finish off that bottom edge. So once again, I'm using my strip of stretchy black faux leather. I'm sewing it down at a quarter of an inch, matching up the edges, going all the way around. It overlaps at the center back, and then I'm going to roll that back 
the back. Stitch the whole thing down and then trim out the excess. There. And now we have a complete cat cowl. Finished and ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is show you the bat cowl, which is a little bit different. So here we have the bat pattern pieces all cut out. Now, there's a couple of key differences here. One of them is that the nose is a separate piece. Um, so you can see the nose piece over here. Um, we've also got a different shaped eye, and the ears are a little taller um, and pointier. Otherwise, everything's pretty much the same. You can see I've got all my pieces cut out. Everything is marked here. Um, I've got all of my registrations done, and I've adhered my black faux leather to my headliner. So we're ready to go. Now, since this one's pretty much the same, I've already gone ahead and assembled like the ear pieces and sewn the head together and gotten it all the way up to the point uh, where we're just going to cover over what's different. Um, so the first thing that we want to do now is we want to bind off the eyes and finish those off before we start adding the nose on. Um, and one thing about the eye that I want to point out is that I'm going to do it in two different pieces rather than one long one, because this point is so sharp that I'm going to start from the nose. I'm going to go to this point. I'm going to stop the binding, and then I'm going to do another piece of binding that goes from the point and then all the way around to where the nose is going to attach. So um, we want to go ahead and start putting that together. So just like before, I've got my strip of stretchy faux leather binding here. And I'm going to start at the end, right there at the eyebrow. And just like before, I'm going to do that quarter inch from the edge, lining it all up. And I'm going to stitch out and stop at the point of the eye. And then what I want to do is I want to trim this off excess here right up against where I've stitched it down. You can see I've gone from the nose and all the way up to the top of the point of the eye. So I just want to try to get a nice clean cut on that. And then I'm going to trim off this little corner underneath just so it doesn't end up popping out after we've Turned everything over. And then just like before, I'm going to roll that binding to the back. And I'm going to stitch right up against that, that original seam line. And secure that binding all the way across the top of the eye. So there's our top all the way up to the point. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the rest of the eye on the bottom. I'm going to take my binding strip. I'm going to line the edge up to the point at the top of the eye so that it matches up with my other piece of binding. And then starting at that point, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew it down exactly the way I have before. You'll need to do some easing around that bottom, uh, that bottom curve on the eye. But if you've got that stretch material, you shouldn't have too big of an issue. Just take it easy and take it slow. If 
cut off the excess of the strip. Roll that back, just like we've been doing. And finish off the bottom edge of the eye. And now, just like before, we're going to go in and just trim out all the excess on the back. And now you can see we've got our entire eye done all the way around for where the nose is going to attach. Now we just need to do the same thing with the other eye. There, now we've got our eyes done, and it's time to attach the nose. The nose piece sews to the sides um, right underneath the eye, and then it's got the tab at the top uh, where it's going to stitch right underneath the eyebrow right there at the center front under the eyes. So first thing we want to do, though, is we want to sew it to the sides of the face. So we're going to match this up, matching up our top edge. So the finished edge of the eye hole should match up to that little corner. And matching up the bottom edges as best we can. If they don't match exactly, it's OK, because you're going to bind off that bottom edge and you can clean it up then. It's most important to make sure that that finished edge at the top of the eye matches into that little corner, so that when you sew the bridge of the nose together, the eye is completely finish. All right, so there's one side sewn down. And what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch it toward the nose. So what we need to do at this point is take the foam, the excess foam out of the seam allowance on the nose side. There. So we pulled that out. Now we're going to fold all that seam allowance towards the nose, and we're going to top stitch that. And trim out the excess on the back. And since my bottom edges didn't match exactly, I'm going to just go ahead and tidy that up so that we get a nice even line. Now, without being sure you're not twisting the face, line up the other side with your finished edge at that little corner.
and I know that, that the cowl is kind of in the way you can't really see, but we're just stitching down that other side of the side of the nose. There, now you can see it. And um, I'm going to take that excess foam out of that side. Just like before. And I'm going to top stitch that. Once again, trim out the excess inside. And we've got our nose attached. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the bridge of the nose. So what we want to do is, just like we did for the other cowl, we're going to match up those notches. And we want to make sure that the finished edges at the bottom of the eye match up to the finished edges on the top of the eye. Stitch down the bridge of the nose. There we go. And now we're going to fold that to the eyebrow. I'm going to fold it up. And top stitch that. So the sides of the nose top stitch toward the nose. The top top stitches toward the eyebrow. Trim out that excess material. And there's our eyes and nose completely put together. Now, you could like put some foam in the nose. Um, you could always put like some wire in there. Um, you could uh, get like a foam mask and glue to the inside of it if you wanted to have more shape. Um, but it, it really will work pretty well. Um, just make it fit however best you like. Now all that's left is to sew up the back, bind off the bottom edge, and that's going to complete the bat cowl. Now let's turn it right side out, turn the ears out, get those points looking nice. The pattern also includes an optional foam insert for the bat ears to help keep them nice and, uh, nice and tall and straight. And there is our finished bat cowl. And here are, are all of the cowls on the form, so you can see what they look like when they're being worn. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of the cowl variants. For more information, visit smpdesigns.com or visit us at etsy.com smpdesignsco. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.